Distortion of the Sling This video is about internal ballistics of the sling, mainly the characteristics that affect the orientation of the pouch during wind-up. The problem In most styles, the slinger spins the sling around his body. The only exception is the pirouette style. The sling in pirouette style might lag behind the throwing arm, but doesn't spin around the body. Although this is true, there is also torsion of the sling in pirouette styles. When the sling is spun around the body because the human wrist has limited range of motion, the sling ends up doing a tumbling motion. This could have been avoided if our wrists were swivels. The sling rotates around two axes. One passes through the release node and the second axis is the length of the sling. For every rotation around its release node, a sling completes a rotation around its length. The ratio is always 1 to 1. Style will determine if the lengthwise rotation is completed in a shorter or longer arc of the sling's normal rotation. The spin around its length is what introduces error in the angle of attack of the shot and will make the shot drift in all kinds of directions. What you want is some control and predictability on that lengthwise spin. If you can't control it or predict it, you can practice it and become consistent. Oscillations The sling is like a simple pendulum, but it's also a torsional pendulum. Pendulums can have friction, which will gradually convert the energy we gave the pendulum to other forms of energy, and the pendulum will stop oscillating. There are three kinds of damping. Underdamped, critical, and overdamped. Underdamped will oscillate many times before stopping. Critical will go straight to the resting position in the fastest way possible. And overdamped will go to the resting position slower than critical does. The torsional damping of the sling depends on the thickness of the sling, air drag, and the internal friction of the cords, which depends on the cords materials and other structural connections such as braid tightness and properties and other braid transitions. Tightly braided ropes, usually ropes that have a stiff feel, will have higher internal friction. There is also directional dependent springiness that has to do with the braiding pattern, how the braider tightens the braid and the cords used. There is also the forced pendulum in which we put energy rhythmically in the system. We can split the forced pendulum also in three categories based on the frequency of the force applied. Very low frequency will result in just moving the pendulum through space without affecting the amplitude. Very high frequency will result in the pendulum being stationary and the hanging point moving a lot. And as the frequency gets closer to the natural frequency of the pendulum, it will result in big displacement of the hanging mass. This is called resonance. Responsiveness and torque Unlike rigid bodies, ropes can't compress, so the formulas for rigid bodies don't really apply here but they can show us what variables might be important in torsion. When the wrist is twisted in relation to the pouch, a torque is applied on the projectile. The torque applied from the sling to the projectile depends on many factors. Torque is the rate of change of angular momentum of the projectile. The responsiveness of the sling and stone system to wrist motion depends on the properties of the system. Systems with higher constant will be more responsive, the shear modulus. This value is for rigid bodies. In the case of ropes, it would depend on the material properties, such as stiffness and the tension of the cords during wind-up, which depends on the centrifugal force. The polar moment of inertia is also a value for rigid bodies. In this case, it depends on the width of the grip and the cross-section of the cords. Thicker cords and wider grips will be more responsive. Moment of inertia of the projectile. A high moment of inertia is less responsive and will be difficult to control. Keeping mass the same, a sphere has a lower moment of inertia than an ellipsoid and is more stable. A projectile that is not centered in the pouch will have higher moment of inertia. A flattened ellipsoid projectile will be more stable if the edge lies in the center of the pouch instead of being flat on the pouch. Generally, shapes that put a lot of mass further away from the axis of rotation will be more difficult to reorient and control. Length. Longer cords are less responsive than shorter cords. Conclusion. When the sling undergoes torsional oscillation, two factors come into play. Damping within the sling and rhythmic force from the wrist. 
which can neither add or remove energy from the oscillation. Good passive control means the sling removes remaining energy from the oscillation in its rotation. Increasing damping reduces the skill required to control the sling orientation, but it can negatively impact other aspects of internal ballistics, such as interference during release and speed. Active control involves studying the throwing technique and practicing, becoming sensitive to the feedback you get from the sling. Factors we can control while slinging are grip width, tension by rotation speed, frequency, wrist and elbow motion. For example, slower rotations with wider elbow and wrist motions can help control projectiles with high moments of inertia. The simplest way to compare the torsion resistance of two slings is to sling with both and feel the differences. Another experiment involves loading the slings, twisting the course to the same angle and allowing them to oscillate using the same projectile and maintaining the same grip width. The sling that stops oscillating in a shorter time is more stable. Generally, torsional damping, velocity and mass work against each other. Increasing one has a negative impact on at least one of the other two.